So you know I cover a lot of Arrow video releases. I'm a huge fan of overall of Arrow video. To me, they are my criteria, and they're the company that puts out the interesting, quirky, cool, obscure, horror, cult, schlock, exploitation, Euro, Japanese, you name it, movies that I really like, and they give them the treatment. And occasionally they release something, and I'm just like, wow, that's that's really like mainstream and it's surprising like they put out weird science and they put out uh fish called wanda and things like that and uh, this release is no exception to that strange exception to the rule it's wild things from 1988 john mcnaughton's neo-noir saucy twisty turny uh murder mystery film and this is a 4k uhd release they have, to, they have a, it's available blu-ray and 4k uhd and it comes in two versions You've got the theatrical release, which I actually saw in the theater once or twice, at least once in the theater, and then the unrated director's cut, which runs like five or six minutes longer, and is, it just has more explicit uh, crude stuff in it than the original. So uh, without giving much away, but which, which by the way, uh, the trailer certainly does, uh, the trailer gives way too much away of this film. I think in general, most trailers would stand to be at least half as long as they currently are. They just, they tend to give you the premise of the film, which is all you really need, and then they keep going and going, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. You won't believe when this happens. Uh, so Wild Things is, like so many films, best experience knowing as little as possible going in. Uh, I would say all you need to know about Wild Things is Nev Campbell, Denise Richards, Matt Dillon, Kevin Bacon, whole lot of saucy going on in Florida. Um, I'm not a major fan of 90s films as a whole. There were great films in the 90s. I guess what I would have to say is I'm not a fan of looking back, or maybe even at the time, of the 90s aesthetic. The look, the music, the way films looked, the way fashion and clothes looked, and this film is, is slathered in the 90s aesthetic. Uh, basically, the story is Matt Dillon is a teacher at a, you know, fairly affluent high school in Florida, and uh, Nev Campbell is a student. She's sort of a goth, troubled goth girl, angry goth girl student, and Denise Richards is a very wealthy, uh, advantaged student, and there's some allegations of improper conduct. There is potentially willing or unwilling improper conduct between these various characters, and then people start turning up uh, not alive so much anymore. So Kevin Bacon is a cop who comes in to investigate, and it's just, it's very edgy, or trying to be edgy. Um, I, watching this movie, I didn't know if it was supposed to be funny or not a lot of the time. Uh, watching the supplements with director McNaughton, I got the idea that it was a little tongue-in-cheek. I found it to be very Joe Esterhousey in its extremities and dialogue, where using f coarse language or, you know, in-your-face sex stuff to try to be shocking and edgy when, to me, it just seems ham-fisted half the time. It's still very much a Hollywood movie. It's got that that late 90s gloss to it and that, like, you know, occasionally fake slow-mo and just the color palette and the clothes and all that. I didn't really buy Nev Campbell as the angry goth uh, rocker girl so much. It really felt like her wearing a costume more than it was the character I was watching. Uh, this was a pretty early role for Denise Richards. I don't know that she had done too much before this. And there is an interview with Denise Richards on here, which is really interesting, where she talks about uh, be doing the movie and, and sort of agreeing to do the nudity and the racy stuff that's in the movie and thinking that, you know, it was a decent career move at the time, consulting with her mother on doing it. And uh, so I think she is primarily the only actress, actor in this film who participates in the contemporary uh, reviews and things. But it does carry over sort of EPK, electronic press kit stuff from when the movie was new. So you get the on-set interviews and a little bit of behind the scenes and stuff like that. Um, there's some outtakes with Bill Murray that are kind of funny where he's just doing improvising various lines during a scene or two. Uh, Bill Murray's in it, by the way. Totally forgot about that until I watched the movie again. And until I mentioned it again just now, Bill Murray plays, uh, I believe it's Matt Dillon's lawyer in the film, and he's he's rather funny. And you've got Teresa Russell as the mother of Denise Richards. It's just, I thought it was very soapy, melodramatic, very R-rated. Uh, I remember being fun at the time, and the twists were surprises at the time. I think for me, looking back at it, the, the the gauze of 90s-ness, late 90s-ness, which may be what somebody loves about it. 
for me, the 70s is what I'm attracted to for that kind of thing. And I can watch a movie that is objectively not good. But if it has the looks, the clothes, the car, the interiors, the signage, the music of the 70s, that goes a long way because it's just a cozy place for me. So many people, I think, feel that way about the 90s. So that your mileage may vary, as they say. So I actually have the uh, the sell sheet here that they give us with uh, what all the extras are. And it, it's extremely unprofessional. Kind of like shooting it in your car. Uh, but I'm going to read what this what's on here because I, I don't remember it all. Uh, the making of documentary, the new interview with Denise Richards, reversible sleeve. Uh, oh, wow. See, I, what I get is not the commercial version of these. So this is actually sounds cool and news to me. Uh, double-sided fold-out poster, six double-sided poster size lobby card reproductions, the understanding a lawyer sound uh, outtakes, a trailer. Now, the trailer is really fuzzy looking, as are the Bill Murray outtakes. It looks like these are the old standard def prepared for DVD or maybe even VHS release, uh, they, they don't look that great, especially when you're comparing it to how the movie looks in 4K, which is razor sharp. Uh, illustrated collector's booklet with new writing on the film, uh, blah, 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 blah. new audio commentary by director John McNaughton and the producer Stephen Jones, commentary by the director, cinematographer, producers, editor, and score composer. That's carried over from a previous release. New interview with John McNaughton, which is very interesting and kind of funny where he talks about trying to make this edgy movie and pushing it as far as they could go for an R rating. And uh, new 4K restoration, as we said, of the original uh, theatrical version and the uh, unrated. Now, I, I had seen the theatrical version at the movies, and I might have watched it on cable once. It was interesting, by the way, to see director John McNaughton use the same phrase I did about a certain scene in the movie where Kevin Bacon has a nude scene. I was used to joke that you get to see Kevin's bacon in this movie. And he said on set, that's what they said about that. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so yeah, I, I originally watched the theatrical version in the theater, maybe once elsewhere. So I decided to watch the unrated cut this time. And I could kind of tell what the unrated stuff was. It was some, you know, a little bit more in one of the sex scenes, a little bit extra sex scene here and there, uh, and a lot more racy, which might actually be the term that Denise Richards keeps. She kept using kind of a funny, kind of old-fashioned term for all the salaciousness in the movie, and I think she might have been using the term racy. All the racy dialogue is a bit more on the unrated cut. Again, I said it's like a five- or six-minute difference. So if you are a fan of Wild Things, this is certainly the edition to have because it looks like it takes what was on any previous edition and then gives you more, and it's in 4K. I don't always notice a giant difference in quality for myself and my you know, less than 2020 vision. Uh, on the 4K discs, for me, 4K tends to make a bigger difference if it's an older film because they tended to be shot much more in focus with much bolder colors. But a 4K release means it's a new transfer. And that 4K release may yield a new transfer for the regular uh, HD Blu-ray release that almost always is packaged with it. So you're getting the best looking version of this film that's ever been seen. So if you are a fan of Wild Things, I would say this new 4K UHD and standard Blu-ray release from Arrow Video is absolutely something you want to have. If you've never seen Wild Things, I would say take a shot. Just know that it, it's kind of pulpy cheese to a pretty large degree. But if you want to see, you know, I guess to be insanely low, low end. If you want to see Denise Richards naked, this is a movie where you can see that. If you want to see Kevin Bacon naked, this is a movie you can see that. And uh, otherwise, it's just a, it's kind of a fun, twisty noir film. It's just nothing I would put next to, you know, Mildred Pierce on the shelf. Available now on 4K UHD from Arrow Home Video is Wild Things.